What do you want to leave the world with? I'm going to answer that question. I'm going to share with you the bag that I'm chasing. Shout out to Jaren Santiago for sending this letter. I'm an eighth grader at St. Ignatius. In our English class, we're writing a professional business letter and I chose to write to you because when I decided over the summer that I would become a barber when I grow up. Your tutorials are the first ones I've seen. Bruh. Then he says, your video showed me how to get crispy lines. Your tutorials showed me how to do a drop fade and a taper fade. I like how you bought a one-way ticket to Sacramento to pursue your dreams. I see all your videos and I hope that you will make new ones. Well, you're watching it right now. Thank you, Jaren, for that heartfelt message, bro. And he actually says more. He says, one day when I'm older, I wanna work at the Rich Barber Hair Studio, just like you. Thank you for taking the time to read my business letter. I would appreciate you writing me back so I could show my class. Again, thank you for your time. It's greatly appreciated. Sincerely, Jaron Santiago. I'm getting letters from eighth graders in Louisiana about how I inspired them to become a barber. 11 months ago, when I was still in a basement, I was cutting hair in my garage. If I can do it, you can too. Let's get into this video. It's a drop fade. How to drop fade. Dummy proof system step by step. I'm gonna walk you guys through. It's a Sunday. I'm getting ready to head to the barber shop. As you guys know, next week we will be at the LV Barber Expo. Just balded them out. I made that that line drop at the very back. It's actually gonna be a, a drop fade effect. We go below the acceptable bone. We go way below it, honestly. And then to make sure that it's completely clean, I go and hit it with my Andis shavers. Next, I grab my Andis master. And I'm going with my number four guard. I'm bringing it up, but now I can have that guideline going all the way up into the top where the length of the hair meets the fade. Now that I've created the bottom guideline, this number four guard is helping me create the top guideline but I really don't want to actually create a line. What it's doing is it's blending straight into all that length on the top. I want to remind you guys to step back from your haircuts sometimes and just think about what it's going to look like. Uh, one thing that I heard Zay the Barber say is that he uses a, a different picture and he'll try to combine the two and he won't stop until he's satisfied, until he gets that end result. There's some major keys I want to share with you guys. If you're not subscribed, make sure to hit that button. All you gotta do is click right below this where it says subscribe. Always combing the hair forward. That's gonna help you get an idea of how you want the cut to look like, whether you're fading or even doing a scissor cut. And my client wants to keep his beard and he also wants to keep the length on the top. So we're only gonna do a light trim. And as you see, I'm, I'm going side to side. And then at the end, I like to cross check my work. And I used to see these videos and be like, man, why did he just stop fading? And he started cutting the top all of a sudden. I see guys like Chris Basio doing it. And really, it's the idea of getting the sides faded into the top so you know exactly what needs to be cut on the top. Because if you don't, you're going to be kind of clueless on how much to cut on the sides and whatnot. This is what's most comfortable. And I left the front of the hairline, those hairs towards the front, I left them the longest. I don't know if you noticed, but I didn't cut those as much because we're going to use the actual trimmers to line that up in the front. He likes to keep that straight line for his bangs. Now that I have the length and the top cut down to where we want it, I can go ahead and jump back into the fade. And I went with my Andis masters but these are actually my andis fade masters and i started with that lever all the way open just going up like a half inch and that way i can really start out this bottom of the fade i always call it the foundation when you're laying a bricks to the house you're not going to slack off on the foundation so you're going to take your time and this is a dummy proof drop fade what that means is we're literally going to go step by step it takes a lot of discipline and focus um you know you can't really be talking to your clients a lot <laughs> as you see i am doing in this video 
when you're a beginner, you really just gotta focus and you gotta um, try to picture what this fade needs to look like and how can you um, go step by step without moving on before the, the blend is fully satisfied. You know, you wanna actually fully blend it before you move to that next guideline. So we switch to the Andis Masters with the lever open and we're doing the exact same steps, but it's gonna be a lot smoother transition now since we started with that fade blade. A lot of people don't know the difference between a Andis Fade Master and then the Andis the regular masters, and it's all in the blade. So you'll notice on the Fade Master, it's really thin and it allows you to get that tight blend. And the Andis Master is more for you know fading and transitioning. But I also like to use the Fade Master for a tight, like if it's an afro or whenever there's a wave cut on the top, there'll be hair sticking up. I like to go over it really gently and just uh, carefully with the fade blade and it takes down all those hairs that are poking up. My method for these, these fades is open, halfway closed. Open, halfway closed. Whenever I put a new guard on, it's open, halfway closed. And this just allows me to really get that system down because you wanna have a way of, of looking at your haircuts where you apply the same steps, you know? And um, Chuka always talks about mastery, you know? You wanna be in the mindset of mastery when you're doing a haircut. So I had my, my Andis Masters lever open, halfway then closed. Now I'm doing the exact same steps with the one guard on. And I go right up to the hook where the arch of your lineup goes. And I make sure that I get right inside there without pushing it too high. And I'm always going up a half inch. And it's just, you know, it's a really disciplined step-by-step -step process. But when you get to the end, you'll be surprised at how clean it is. You know, you can already see the blend start to come together. There's always little things you can do to get extra details. As if you can focus on an extra detail, that's gonna set you apart. Um, I'll pull the skin sometimes to get a tighter blend. I might just use the corner of the blade. This is the zero guard, open. And I'm gonna, there's a faint line in between the the one open and then where we started it out with no guard. So this zero guard will actually take that away. Right here, another key is the darkness on a drop fade is so important. So a lot of times we'll keep these same steps. We'll go from the one, the two, the three, to the four guard. And that's really gonna, you know, pull your transition. It's gonna spread the blend all the way up to the top. We want a, a really smooth transition, but we can actually skip from that one and a half all the way into that the length of the number four. Because after that, it goes from just darkness. It's not really about how long the hair is, it's just, from your visual eye, what can you see? The darkness of the transition. So a great method is the clipper over comb method. And it's very simple. You wanna have a, a comb that is more wide tooth. And once you tilt it back, you gotta make sure that it's at a 45 degree angle and you're pulling away. So it's kind of complicated because you're pushing in while also pulling away. But this saves you so much time on your blend and it just looks so much crispier. And it keeps that drop fade effect where it's really dark on the top, but yet, it still blends all the way down to a skin fade.
And now we can see all we really need to do is just line them up. And the beard is the one thing that he did not want to uh, blend in or fade in or even take it down. So it's going to go from really dark on top to the faded um, down to the skin and then straight into the beard. And all we did was line it up. And you can see there's still a faint line at that one and a half guard area where we're going to go ahead and just blend that out. So what I did is I grabbed my wall magic clip and I'm using the number zero guard. I always, whenever I need to take out some bulk, start with the lever open and then that way if it's not cutting, you can go ahead and close it. And I did not want to bring this fade up at all. So I'm using the half um, guard, but I'm also only using about half of the, the clipper. The only part of the, the blade that's seeing any of the hair is maybe a few, uh, a few strokes on like the corner of the blade. And this is another key, the Enhance Hold Spray is going to help hold these hairs in place. So as I'm combing through the hair, I'm going to go ahead and spray some of that hold spray. And then I have the fan on, I always let the hair dry with either a blow dryer or just letting it dry itself. And then check the lineup position and just be aware if one side is higher, you got to be in tune to that. So a lot of times people's hairline actually grows in an uneven way. We might just line up on both sides thinking it's perfect when in reality, it's completely um, sideways. So a lot of times looking in the mirror is gonna um, expose that. And throughout the haircut, I always see Chuka and Zay, Daniel, Dunn. I see everybody looking in the mirror. And that's one thing that I had to start doing when I got to the Rich Barber, because before this, honestly, I was in the garage, I was in people's kitchens, and you know, you don't have a mirror to look in, so I didn't have that habit, but it's definitely helpful. If you're a beginner and you have a mirror, check it as often as possible, especially before the lineup. And right here, I wanted to show you that I always start in the middle, I'll go over to the side, and then I'll go to the next side. And the reason for that is because it's less of a distance, so I can really get that straight lineup effect, even when it's long hair. I mean, he has some bangs, you know, that hang down on his forehead, but it still keeps that straight. That's the finished cut, it's a drop fade dummy proof tutorial if you guys are interested in becoming an apprentice i have a one-on-one -on -one video opportunity 10 training series videos as well as one-on-one -on -one group calls with me to help you get into the shop make an income and really just fast track your success as a barber make sure you guys subscribe if you aren't yet subscribed and stay tuned for the next one i'm out We're coming to Las Vegas, September 29th and September 30th.